What's up? I'm May, and welcome to my new series called I Could Make That, in which I see something online or out in the real world and think I could definitely DIY that. For today's project, I found this photo as an inspiration, and I had some gingham fabric left over from another project, and I had just enough to make a small garment. So I grabbed my leftover fabric and I stretched it out around myself to make sure I had enough from the neckline to my desired length, plus a little extra for that ruffle and the neckline. So I'm going to take some measurements and see if I can make it. Starting to gather all my supplies. I've got my thrifted gingham fabric matching thread, scissors, measuring tape, and some pins. And step one is to cut out the whole front panel. I am taking one quarter of my hip measurement. So if you wrap the measuring tape around your hips, I gave myself about four inches of wiggle room. And then once I quartered that, is about 10 and a half inches. And then I measured from where I wanted my strap to start all the way down to where I wanted my dress to stop right before the ruffle. And that was 28 inches. And the depth is four inches from the top of my strap all the way to where the neckline will hit. So from those two points, I am drawing a curve for my neckline. Here's the quarter of my hip measurement. And I'm gonna be taking that all the way up to the top of where I want that strap to start. And drawing another curved line here. Again, back to that hip measurement. Quartered is 10 and a half inches. I'm just gonna cut a straight line down. Here is our first piece. This is our front panel, and we need an identical one for the back. So I'm just going to refold it in half, set it on a folded piece of fabric, straighten everything out, and cut the same exact shape again. I've got my front and my back. I'm gonna line everything up, good sides together or right sides together. If you have a brighter side of your fabric, those will be facing, so the seams will be hidden. And then I'm pinning all down the side from the armpit down to the bottom hem and stitching one straight line forward and back to start. All the way down, forward and back to end. Here's everything all put together. After I tried it on, I realized that I wanted it to come in a little bit at the chest. It was feeling a little too boxy. So I folded the dress together just so I would get an even cut on both sides. And then just sheared down, starting at about an inch and a half and then tapering it down to the side. I sewed it all back together, tried it on and fits great. If you do cut off a few inches here, I would just recommend that you do taper your cut so you can start wide at the top and then kind of fade it down to about the hip area. If you just take in a few inches at the top, you'll end up with a big pucker here. So just make sure to fade that line out. And next, we're gonna work on the neckline. Here I'm taking my measurement. And I've got 12 inches. And really quickly do the back just to make sure I did it all right. And then we're going to be cutting our own bias tape today. 
this is just cut on the stretchiest part of the fabric or the 45 degree angle line. So I'm finding that line and I'm cutting out a 12 inch strip for my neckline by one and a half. So here you see it's really stretchy. I'm just gonna be cutting the corners so it's a nice perfect rectangle. And then same thing for the back neckline. And here we are pinning in place the binding of our neckline, finding the midpoint of my fabric. I'm just gonna pin it right to the center of the neckline and work my way all the way up the sides. And then we're gonna sew one straight line. And this is what it looks like right sides out. So that binding is attached to what would be the inside of the dress or the wrong side. And we're gonna double fold towards the good part of the neckline and then close that hem in our roll. If you've never used bias binding before, this can be a little tricky. You've gotta finagle the fabric around a little bit. Just working until it sits smoothly. So you fold once, fold twice, and pin over the neckline. Then all the way up, we will sew around. Starting at the neckline with the forward and back stitch. Slowly going around. I'm sewing as close to the edge as I can. And here's how it looks. I've done the front and back, so now it's time to do the armholes and the straps, which is one entire piece. So for this formula, I am finding up from the shoulder to the armpit is eight and a half inches. We're gonna times that by two for the front and back, and then add seven inches for the strap. So bear with me here. I am taking that circle of 24 inches and I'm just trying it on over my shoulder, seeing how it fits. And that is how your dress will fit around your armpit when it's done. That fits me pretty well, so I'm going with 24 inches times that same 1.5 width. I've got a bigger cutting mat out, which also shows me the bias line, and that's super helpful. But again, you can find the stretchiest part of the fabric just by stretching it at an angle. For this strap, I'm going to sew it together right sides together if you have a fabric with right sides. And we're creating one big circle for the strap. And again, find that midpoint, which is where you just sewed your seam. Attach it at the armpit. I'm just making sure that once I sew this on, it's gonna be the right way. If you've seen my first couple videos, sometimes I make mistakes and sew things on wrong. I'm going about pinning this all the way up to that little shoulder seam. And we'll just sew this half circle to start. I do wanna make sure that once I pin this and sew, it's going to cover the other strap, just perfectly overlap it. So this half circle and then coming back, this part is so satisfying. Again, you'll double fold and then enclose the strap and it sits perfectly over that neckline that we created. I'm going down the armpit, double folding and pinning.
and then slowing down here as I get to the strap. You'll just be folding into the center and then one fold over. Into the center, one fold over. It's honestly, it kind of does it itself, perfectly rolls. And then we're gonna sew it together. Again, sewing nearest the edge as I can, just to enclose all that fabric inside. And here I go, sewing this strap. Looks pretty good. I'm very happy with that. Now that the other side is done, it's time to add the ruffle. For this ruffle, I'm taking a six inch height with a 58 inch length. I found this to be the width of my bottom hemline times 1.5. Because I'm working with scraps, I did have to cut out a few strips just to get to that 58 inch length. And I'm sewing them right sides together until I have one long strip of fabric for my ruffle. So now I've got my one long strand. I'm going to create a rolled hem on the bottom just to clean things up. This is a teeny tiny hem. Just a double roll on the very edge. I'm gonna pin it all along and sew down. While I was at my machine, I also sewed a loose stitch at the top. I'm gonna pull that thread to create our beautiful ruffle. And this is quite the process. I've got 58 inches of ruffling to make here. I'm just pulling very gently and slowly so I don't snap anything. Taking my time. Now I've got it all gathered. It is the same width as the bottom hemline. And I'm going to take good sides together, right sides together. Flip it up onto the dress and start pinning at the side seams. I love when my seams match. Then pinning all around. Our last step is to sew one straight line on this ruffle. You may need to move your ruffles around a little bit just to lay a little flatter for your machine. And voila, here's our ruffle. Looks pretty good. Give it an iron. And then this dress is done. Let's try it on. So I thought that the project turned out pretty well and I'm really excited to make some more things in the future for this series. And I hope it brought some inspiration to you to see something and think I could make that and then have the tools to do it. So thanks for watching with me today. I'll see you next time. Cheers.